Hi all, uh, this lecture is uh, 10.1 Internet Deviance. So we are going to be uh, talking uh, this time about uh, basically the deviance that we use using the internet and uh, similar communication technologies. Uh, admittedly, uh, some of the things they talk about in this uh, uh, chapter are a little bit dated. Um, this happens any time that people over the age of 50 are put in charge of writing and editing a book about technology. Uh, but we'll get through it. And honestly, it's not so dated that it isn't usable. So uh, the Internet today uh, in many ways represents uh, the Wild West or uh, other uh, places with a lack of law and law enforcement. Um, because our uh, law enforcement officers, our police officers, the FBI, all that, they really aren't uh, equipped to deal with internet crime. Sure, the FBI has some resources to deal with that kind of crime, but most of the law enforcement in society is dedicated to uh, deviants that takes, and crime that takes place in, uh, in real life, in the real world, right? As a result of that, uh, we, uh, you know, there's a lot of crime that goes on on the internet that it, it's gotten away with. Uh, part of that's lack of regulation. Part of it is because it's hidden. It's not really uh, present. And another part of it is we don't really understand what's happening. We don't understand that if something, if something is against the law or not. Like, what is the nature of crime... What is the crime that's being uh, committed with a denial of service attack, for example? Uh, you, what is it? No one really knows. Uh, and that's a big part of the whole problem. There are two types of uh, what is called cyber deviance. Uh, there's disrupting a computer network as a target, such as, uh, such as in many hacking cases right, uh, such as a denial of service attack, a dox attack, um, and this could happen for a variety of reasons. Uh, your, many hackers do this be, it's because they can or because they have a problem with uh, the target. Uh, some of them do it uh, as a form of activism. The term hacktivism has been used by uh, groups like Anonymous. Um, or are they terrorists? Uh, there's kind of a fine line between an activist and a terrorist uh, in this regard, and actually in some other ways. But um, what is terrorist activity? What is activist activity online? It's especially murky. And then another type of cyber deviance is using a computer as a uh, tool to, to commit crimes uh, that we'll see on the next slide. Uh, but basically, you use a computer as a tool just like you might use a stethoscope as a tool to crack a safe open or a screwdriver as a tool to get to break into a car. Um, so identity theft is one example of uh, internet uh, crime or deviance. Uh, taking someone's identity, taking their credit card numbers, taking their uh, social security number, doing what you can with that information, stealing things from bank accounts. You could do all of those things without uh, internet technology, but it's harder. Uh, another thing, child pornography. So, um, or creating violent non-consensual pornography. Those types of porn that are illegal, that uh, almost everyone in society agrees are bad, uh, that is the kind of, uh, you, that crime could be committed without the internet, but it is enhanced and the ability to enhance that uh, is, uh, takes place online. And then also piracy. Uh, nearly any type of media or information can be uh, copied uh, online. Uh, you, you know, we all know this, but books... It can be done with movies, most famously, music, etc., etc. Now, it is so prevalent, this thing of piracy, I don't even know if I want to call it a crime, that, you know, we're having conversations as a society as far as 
what is intellectual property? Is there a such thing as intellectual property? Is it actually a crime to copy songs? Where is that line? When it de when does it become a crime? Right? Um, is it immoral? Is it a violation of the norms of society? If people don't actually think it's wrong, then it may be illegal, but it might be something that isn't backed up by the norms of society. So it would effectively be along the lines of a crime like speeding or jaywalking, right? Uh, it would be a crime that no one feels bad about, but is still against the law. And when we have those laws that no one feels bad about, but is still against the law, then uh, that brings up a lot of issues in basically the nature of democracy. So another type of uh, online deviance is uh, seeking money online. So uh, online theft involves the use of a computer uh, to uh, steal credit cards, steal social security numbers, steal other personal information such as a sign-in name, a password, an account. Uh, obviously uh, the easiest way to do that would be to get a, a uh, credit card. Uh, in most cases, you just plug that in and maybe the number's on the back of it and you get the money. Uh, Social Security number um, is not hyper useful in and of itself, but it is useful for accessing other information from the individual. But like I just said, these are not new crimes. Uh, it used to be that... Uh, if someone wanted to steal your identity uh, in, say, the 70s or 80s, they would dig through your garbage and try to find that information that way. Uh, they might, um, you know, do those sorts of things. Uh, they could, uh, you, you could then use a shredder to get rid of that, right? So if you just shred a document, then uh, that would get rid of that information now because everything is online and our information is readily accessible with the right tech. Uh, it created a greater um, capacity for people to use that technology. Internet gambling is another uh, form of deviance. Uh, it is not. Rem this is an example of something that is not um necessarily always against the law that uh is still uh deviant right it's not uh normal behavior uh 12 billion people billion people gambled in 2006 yeah that's a decade old uh and that needs to be updated and in many areas uh online internet gambling is illegal in the united states when internet gambling does occur in the united states it often um takes place through legal loopholes and a major reason why it is illegal in the ways that it's illegal is that online gambling um, avoids paying taxes. And in areas in the United States uh, where gambling is present, which is a lot of areas of the United States, but where it's present, the reason why we allow gambling is because gambling is heavily taxed, right? And if gambling is heavily taxed, then we use those taxes to do things like paying uh, helping senior citizens or helping uh, people get college education or that sort of thing. So uh, gambling is one of those crimes that is it victimless? Well, maybe directly it's victimless, but if uh, 12 billion dollars worth of gambling is happening and it's not being taxed, then that's effectively hurting old people or maybe people that might be getting college scholarships or that sort of thing. Now let's talk about online sex. Now, one thing I have to bring up, and it really irritates me with this chapter, is uh, the overuse of the term cyber. Uh, I think uh, anytime I see cyber, I think of what people call the internet the World Wide Web or other things that are really dated to the late 90s. Um, but your textbook does use the term cyber sex and cy cyber porn. In our conversation, in our society, I think when most people refer, refer to pornography now, they're referring to online porn, but but whatever, right? Okay, so cyber sex is defined as online personal ads and chat rooms, uh, and more than that. 
uh, it includes uh, trading email uh, via you trading uh, pornographic pictures and steamy conversations that was a weird choice of words in the text um, and it ends in uh, sexual stimulation and masturbation or meeting the person uh, for uh, sex in person so your Craigslist hookups uh, other things like that uh, there are uh, to my understanding um, various sex toys that could be hooked up to computers so it could be that sort of thing Pro but probably the most common form of this is um, kind of online mutual masturbation situation uh, but you know we don't talk about these things because they're kind of rude but it's a major industry right uh, between 20,000 and 30,000 porn sites are on the web, right? Again, antiquated, the internet. And it generates uh, $7 million uh, per year. And these aren't little corporations either. These are, I'm not sure about their online holdings, but Disney uh, has uh, pornography branches, right? They don't tie it with Disney, but uh, just like Disney controls Par Parabout, Disney also controls... Uh, sub uh, pornography um, most uh, cyber porn sufferers are older surfers are older and again surfers uh, I'm not sure if that statement's still accurate um, and uh, but it is good to point out that this kind of deviance is not new uh, and I do actually that's not antiquated way I'm talking about VHS video cassettes right VHS tapes and those kind of movies were not common and could not have happened without uh, porno, w w without uh, picture movies of people having sex. That's what got VHS players in houses, is people wanting to have pornography in their house, right? And then they started selling uh, their DVDs of The Little Mermaid and the kids stuff too. Right? Same thing with DVD players, obviously. And then, really what got streaming services going, uh, it, if you look at uh, the entertainment industry, pornography is usually front and center. Uh, and again, this online hate groups. So, a major part of uh, online deviance is the use of online hate groups. Uh, it's basically, it's the masking behavior of the internet. Uh, it's easier for people to express prejudice because uh, it is semi, it's not taboo in our society, but is certainly seen as being not cool to be openly prejudiced uh, in our social world. So if people do want to be in a hate group deep down, they do it online. And there has been a proliferation of anti-minority extremist hate groups uh, online. And a lot of that build, built up uh, in the last couple decades to where uh, groups are now connected via uh, institutions like Breitbart, like Stormfront, uh, other what are now calling themselves alt-right, while in reality they're Nazis, um, groups. And they were able to build in 2016 uh, the the small amount of power and the bulge that they had uh, in late 2016 since luckily it's I think tamped down a little bit but it's still an issue um, to the point where you know Nazis are back which is which is unbelievable now, there are organizations that are trying to combat internet prejudice, right? There are people saying, hey, listen, uh, you, uh, you service provider, you are helping Nazis do their Nazi thing. And so there are uh, people trying to stop that from happening. Uh, another uh, issue loosely related with online hate groups, but also uh, it can be used otherwise, is cyber stalking. This is using the internet. Uh, to harass uh, victims a lot of it takes the form of what traditional stalkers would do for potential romantic what they see as romantic partners uh, that is certainly an issue but some of it is also um, are also online hate groups that will uh, basically um, do their best to ruin people's lives using the internet 
if uh, they are outspoken critics of that given hate group. And that's the real danger of online hate groups. Uh, they could also uh, spread personal data gained through the internet. So uh, this takes place uh, around the world and it can create uh, serious emotional and mental harm. Uh, it could lead to uh, physical or sexual assault of the individual stuff, especially if uh, addresses are given. Um, I put this quote that was given to me by a uh, little hateful monster. Um, I went to a, uh, a counter demonstration of an anti-gay marriage uh, protest a couple years ago. And this uh, little monster, uh, I don't really, really like to refer to him as a human because he's locally an incredibly hateful individual and will basically go at, never stops to really be hateful toward both women and um, LGBT people. But anyway, um, his favorite thing to say is, well, I'm going to get you on Facebook with this because he likes to wear a GoPro, which is a little uh, name brand camera. And he loves to put people's picture on Facebook. Well, he doesn't recognize that, you know, I teach online, right? Uh, a lot of my work is online and I'm not afraid of being on the internet like him and um, a lot of old people are. Um, but that is a threat to some people. That makes the, some people feel um, unsafe. And the, his hate group in particular likes to make people feel unsafe in their communities and uh, likes to try to terrorize people. Um, I'm not afraid of him because, quite frankly, they're pathetic. But if I were a more vulnerable person, if I weren't a person that... Um, you know, if I were older or if I was afraid of being fired because of my political views, then uh, I might be afraid of him. But um, as it is, I'm not. Uh, two good sources for this kind of stuff. Um, I hope that Stormfront.org doesn't exist anymore. I'm pretty sure I heard that it... Um, has come under fire and its internet service providers were uh, pooling their content. But what Stormfront was, was a basically a uh, clearinghouse for Nazi material. They were about the most wicked, the cruelest of online neo-Nazi groups. And, um, and they're really, really very bad people. Uh, but if you want to check out that website, I'd suggest doing it uh, somehow not on a computer that you actually own, um, you can see the kind of filth that they uh, cater in. Or, if you don't want to do that, the Southern Poverty Law Center is an amazing organization that uh, provides information on hate groups, on, and you can learn an amazing amount of information about uh, hate groups in your area, hate groups around the country, and figure out, you know, what are the horrible organizations in your area? And that's scary, and that's terrible, and that's something a lot of people aren't interested in knowing, but it's really important. From the knowledge that I have from knowing about hate groups, I've been able to, like, warn uh, restaurants owned by uh, non-white people. It's like, hey, this graffiti outside on your wall, this means that a hate group and that I know of is like targeting you and you might want to take care of that like that's that's helpful it's good to know the problems that are going on it's not all swastikas um, a lot of it's swastikas but a lot of uh, hate groups particularly neo-nazis they use other symbols as well so let's talk about more what you could call classic hacking um, classic hacking involves a targeting a computer network it is another form of cyber deviance uh, again that word cyber uh, computer hackers break into computer networks, uh, that should say plant viruses, uh, change usernames, they might just explore the network. Um, there was at one time, I think there were more of these people, there probably still are, a breed of hacker that just wants to get into a system because they can. Um, I'm not, I haven't looked at the numbers on that uh, very recently, I'm not sure if those kinds of people still exist. Uh, cyberspace, 
uh, is creating uh, new opportunities for terrorism, as we discussed. Uh, when we talk about online hate groups, that's a lot of uh, ha online hate groups, terrorists, quite frankly, I consider them to be one and the same thing. Um, here we have a distribution of cyber deviants in the United States and abroad. Uh, so, what do we have the most of? Uh, so, in the right-hand column, we have the types of crime, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, not the right-hand column. The most left-hand column, we have the types of crime. The middle column, we have the states in the United States. And in the most uh, right-hand column, we have the countries it's taking place in. Uh, keep in mind, this is from 2010. It's not that out of date. Uh, so I would expect that these numbers are still relatively accurate. Um, keep in mind that uh, many people committing these crimes, as far as location goes, might be using proxy servers, right? So they might be directing through other places. But even with that said, 65% uh, of it coming out of the United States, only 10% coming out of the United Kingdom. I would guess that most of that uh, is definitely in the United States. Uh, it appears that California has the highest rates of um, cyber deviants, or at least complaints filed against cyber deviants. It may very well be that there's a lot of online crime happening in Ohio but they don't have the law enforcement to back it up like they do in California. That's a possibility. Um, and then we see uh, non-delivery uh, slash payment of merchandise. So uh, you order something online, you pay 40 bucks for it, and no one actually delivers it, and then the website disappears. Uh, that That's a definite possibility. I'm not sure what FBI-related scams are. Uh, considering that it's called a scam, I would presume that it has to do with... Um, you know, taking people's money. Uh, anything else interesting there? Uh, spam is listed as a term of cyber deviance. I don't know about that. Um, but yeah, these are the kind of crimes that are committed using computers. And again, uh, the most common types of crimes. And that is the end of our presentation. So um, I'll talk to you later.